Welcome back. Does everybody remember how to use one of these things? Tonight we're going to cover a basic roof scoping, diagramming, and measuring class and go over how to document all the components on this roof so that we can properly rate that estimate back at the office. So we'll start guys on the takeoff here and let's position ourselves. By the way, I'm on top of the ridge because I like to be on the highest point of that roof in order to draw it effectively. So we're on top of the ridge here. And once I get a good vantage point, I'm gonna look around and start picking out my largest features on a roof. See that chimney over there? I'm gonna draw a square with a C. Okay, and I'm gonna start to, I got a big AC in it behind me on the right. I'm gonna go ahead and write AC here. And I'm gonna start to try to just draw out of uh, those hips over there. It's a little line. I'm gonna come in. Got a square. I got another big hip over going that way. It's coming up like so. It doesn't have to be perfect on your first couple ones, guys. You just want to sketch that out to the best of your ability. There's my chimney going back there. Straight lines for ridges. Straight lines for ridges, dotted valleys, dotted lines for valleys. Dotted lines for valleys. Got another valley over this side. We got my ridge that goes back. The ridge I'm on is in front of that AC unit, so that's right here. Solid lines for ridges, dotted lines for valleys. Now if I walk over here, I can kind of, my diagram's gonna make more sense when I start dropping in my little ventilation systems. So I'm doing a circle for my spinning turbines over there. I'm gonna walk over here, make sure my lines are straight. I know a lot of you guys don't do this anymore. The technology has made it so we don't have to, but it's, good. it's a good skill to know how to quickly diagram a roof in case you don't have access to iRoofing, Eagle View, all this different technology. I got two plumbing stacks over here. So those are two little circles with a black dot in them, okay? If you want, write a little P next to them. All right, if you ever get disoriented while you're drawing it, guys, remember your main point, you know, your, your vents. So you start, once you start drawing your vents in, the roof kind of comes together and makes more sense. You know, we got a ridge here, we got a hip going down there past the chimney. We got a flat roof sticking out the backside. Old school diagramming. We got another turbine sitting in front of us. That's a circle with a T. We got another little plumbing stack. And then we got some ventilation, which is a little rectangle. We got some ventilation over there next to the valley, which is another little rectangle. So my ventilation is my, here they're not low profile vents. And what I'm doing is just writing all my components so I don't forget them later on, because guess what? Technology doesn't always pick these components up, do they Jarvis? So a lot of times these vents are missing from your eagle view or the sizes or what they are. And when you're up there, you want to make sure you grab the components, whether you know how to diagram or measure or not. And so I'm just making sure. Now, if you notice, because I got all my components in, I can quickly orientate myself to my roof. This is the front of the house. This is my right elevation, left, rear. There's my AC unit that's grumbling there behind us. And I'm just gonna finish grabbing all my components. So I got two plumbing stacks, two whirly birds. What do we got over here, Jarvis? Got an exhaust vent. You got one exhaust vent. Plumbing stack. Plumbing stack. We got two more exhaust vents over here, correct? Yeah, those are gonna be for your, um, your microwave exhaust, your bathroom exhaust fan, things like that. In the Midwest, you'll see something more of a gooseneck look with a damper in it. Out here in Arizona, we don't get much rain, so we don't have to worry about being too watertight in that aspect. Okay, so it's not perfect picture perfect, but we got, I think we got them all. Let's double check over here. Now, if you notice on that, that chimney there, we got an old direct TV antenna, so I'm gonna orientate my diagram, and I'm gonna go ahead and write TV with a circle on it, and that's gonna remind me later that I have a TV antenna or a TV satellite dish or something there, which is gonna allow me to write a better estimate later on to detach and reset that. 
Is there anything else we're missing, Jars? Looks like, oh, we got a, uh, we got a little cricket there in front of the chimney. If so you ever what? do forget anything, one thing your production manager is always going to want you to do, take a bunch of photos when you're up here. Take photos of anything you're not sure about, anything that looks a little strange, and just overall photos in general. One this way, one that way. One this way, one that way. And any close-ups of any awkward situations like right there that's kind of flat. So you might want to know about that because there's going to need to be some ice and water shoes under there. Also, you have a large swamp cooler or AC unit or any kind of apparatus like this on a roof. This is going to require content manipulation or extra roofer hours to work around, possibly to detach and reset it. Although it looks like this one, you could probably work around it. Sometimes the guys might have to lift it. So this would be a good idea to take a picture of this while you're up here diagramming your roof. Now let's go ahead, we got the, di we got the basic diagram done. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I know a lot of you guys are never gonna actually diagram a roof with all the technology out there. But it's good to know how to do it when you need to do it. Let's go ahead and start dropping some tape measures now. So we wanna get the main, we call this the up and over. And we got 19 and a half. Jarvis, why don't you go ahead and get that flat portion down there. Now if you look where I'm at right here, we're gonna go ahead and write a drop of 19.5 with two little dashes like this. So when we go back later on to write our estimate, we're gonna know exactly that up and over is 19 and a half over on this side. What do you got? 25.7 Okay, so we got 25.7 on a length. And on and these, I always like to go up at least 18 inches because this flat part needs to go up that slope underneath these shingles. So, so he's going to run 18 inches over because that flat granulated roof roll down there is going to run 18 inches underneath the architectural shingle. It brings it to 13. What'd you get? 13 feet. 13 total? Yep. So we're going to write a 13 and a little dash to, to square that off later when we get back to the office. Now we're also going to need the valleys, closed valley, 18 feet. That other side is going to be the same. And then there are there's our dotted lines for our valleys. So we'll go ahead and drop an 18 on those. And those are closed valleys. So when you see our, our valley measurement here, you want to write closed. So we remember how to estimate those correctly later when we get back to the office. What do we got on that one, Jarvis? 16 feet, five inch. So that's the other up and over, off the other side there. So that's 16 and a half with a little dash for our up and over. Do you have that ridge right there? We're gonna need that ridge. 15 feet. 15 feet? Yep. What, what was that side? 15. This one's, this one's 21. What else we need up here, Jarvis? Probably need to double check this extra flat portion in case we need a different type of underlayment. Once you go under that 212 pitch, so that's about an eight. Eight by eight. Relatively flat area. So that production manager knows what. Gonna need some ice and water. Need some ice and water. Something a little better than felt, right? Yeah. So that's this area right here. We'll call that an eight by eight flat. So we know later on to put some better underlayment and tie-in under that area is right there. Now we're gonna what we're gonna do once we collapse these two hips in is we're gonna square off the whole roof. So now that we have those, that ridge and that valley, we collapse those in. All we need is the total length of the house, which we can get from the ground. And we take this up and over and calculate it into one big square. I like to do it a little differently. I like to measure all the way down to the eave. It's gonna be 24.6 all the way down to there. So we can block that off. And basically we got the main portion of the house. We got this. This side is 19.5. 19.5 and plus 24, this one. 24.6 times the length of the house that way. And then all we need to do is measure that eave right there times 
from that peak down to that eave again times two, and that'll give us that little extension right there. Huh, do that could with do both that of those. Too. But if you wanted to make a clean break on a square and turn into one big square, you could because that you might not get enough waste if you do that. If you collapse these hips into this one big rectangle, we still need your up and over and length of the house. It'll come out to be about the same thing. Right. I think mine will have a little extra. <laughs> and I like a little extra on my estimates for waste. Plenty of cuts here. I would say this is 15% waste. Definitely a 15%. I'd probably argue for 18% just because of the big hips. And uh, let them talk me down to 15%. Well, we want to, this one, not very steep, but normally you do want to get the pitch or the slope of the roof. Well, let's get it. We got a $40 steep pitch. Yeah, we got a little digital one here, but you can get one like that for eight bucks. So this one's $8, and that one's $40. So basically, just hit this little button right here, changes it to slope. So it's four and one eighth over 12. So it's a four twelve. Down here, obviously it's gonna be a little different. So it's nice to have it. So you're under a two twelve there. That means regular old felt isn't gonna cut it. Uh, some areas say if you double up your felt, that'll work. But uh, if you do an ice and water shield or um, self-adhered, it's going to be a lot better system. Now, the reason that little calculator is so important, guys, because when you're on a 10-12 pitch roof or a 12-12, you guys know that you, you guys use an Xactimate, that is, is there's a dramatic price difference between a 7-12 to 9-12. And once you hit that 10-12, that thing goes up. So it behooves you, especially your newer guys, not to always call it. Sometimes a 9-12 and a 10-12 can look very close. A 1012 goes up 20, 30 bucks a square. Right. And that 1212, which is a 45 degree angle, that goes up dramatically in price. So you want to know those steep, you want to know those steep charges down to a, down to a science once you get to the steeper roofs. So guys, just some basic uh, things to remember. We're on top of an architectural shingle roof. I don't know if it's GAF, Tamco, or what it is. Looks like it looks like an old heather, what is it, heatherwood or weatherwood? It's a certainty. Certainty. Landmark. Landmark. Mm -hmm. So you know this is our Hip and ridge, this is actually the hip portion of the roof. So when you hear the word hip, they're talking about this. When you, when you hear the word ridge, they're talking about this part of the roof, which is up top. So over here, if you look on the other side, again, those are your hips coming down, and those are your ridges up the top. This is a closed valley roofing system. So if you look here, the shingles are brought together. There's no, there's no exposed metal. But guess what? There's still something that needs to go underneath here other than felt. Right, Jarvis? What do we got on this one? Ice and water shield. Ice and water shield or flat, val flat valley coil metal on top of felt. Or in some cases, people do a 90 pound roof roll. But you need something of, of substance underneath that valley um, other than just felt. If we look over here, these are our plumbing stacks, which a lot of production managers hate salespeople for because they fail to do this and double check the inside diameter. That's only two inch, so if it's one to three inch, Jarvis, we don't have to worry about it, correct? Not if we use the neoprene collar, which is, has cutouts for one inch, two inch, or three inch. So we're going to use those neoprene plumbing stack collars, or pipe boots, for anything that's a one to three inch. So if these are one, two, and three inch, you're okay. But if they're four and five inch, that's why you got to measure them. You're going to need, uh, need a different type of material up there. So if you look down here, Again, one inch, good to go for the one, one and three inch pipe boot, two inch. These are your whirly birds, oftentimes hit with hail, invisible when they're spinning, so you can see the hail. These are actually newer ones, otherwise known as turbine vents. Why don't you talk a little bit again about those, ventil those ventilation systems there for drivers? Yeah, those are exhaust caps. Here in Arizona, we call them T-tops. Most other markets use uh, a damper vent, which is more like a gooseneck. Really good for rain um, security, and nothing can get in them as well. Uh, but here, we'll, roofing is a little cheaper sometimes, so we just use the T-tops. So how does, the, how does the sales associate spec those out or measure those so that you know which ones to put on? You usually go by a four inch, 
Or an eight inch. So you got a four inch here and an eight Very inch good. over there. Why don't we double check them? Because we, we should get a count while we're up here. Again, you want to measure the pipe on the inside. So that one's a four inch. And once you, I mean, four inch and an eight inch, you can usually just kind of eyeball those once you get the hang of it. So, we, so then we just do a count. So we got one four inch, two four inch, three. We got one more on the other side. So that's four four inch, right? And then one eight inch right here. So the idea, guys, is to not have to come back up here and do this again and not to piss off your production manager or the owner that's building these jobs. So the more of this detail you get this first time you're up here or right after the adjustment when you know it's approved, that might be the last time you ever have to come back up here, and that's a good thing. While I'm up here, because I don't want to have to come back up here, I'm going to go ahead and mark down some of these things. You said we're on a 412 here, correct? So unfortunately, we're not probably not going to be getting a steep charge. Um, whirly birds, we had f five. So this little sheet comes in handy for you newer sales associates to remember to fill these things in. Plumbing stacks, we had four one three inch. Our valley metal, we didn't have valley metal. They're closed valleys, but we still got to do something with those things. And we'll calculate that linear foot back, footage back at the office. And then the only other thing we have to add is our uh, two eight inch and four four inch for damper bent covers back at the office. So because we got the up and over up top on the rectangle, now we got to get the length of that rectangle to squish it down and become one big square. So we're going to break this up into three pieces to get the total length. 27 plus 5, 29. 29 plus 27 plus 5. That now gives us the full length of the rectangle. Times the up and over. Add the two hips, so we turn this thing into one, smush this into one big square, which is ultimately length times width.